Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to return to this, the robot I've been putting together using the DF Robot Devastator Tank mobile platform and controlled by Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now, this is the second video looking at this build of this robot. In the first I put it together, I got it driving around using a bit of code on the Raspberry Pi controlled from a Rai i8 keyboard, but things weren't ideal, I was just testing things out. So in this video I want to improve stuff, this is a sorting out the robot video. I want to do things like making the tracks a lot, lot tighter, those aren't quite right yet. I want to get the code improved on the Pi, particularly get the code running on boot, that'll be very useful. And I want to sort out the power, so this thing's going to be powered by a LiPo battery, a single LiPo battery, rather than the two battery sources it has at the moment. So I'm going to sort all that out, get it running better, and then I'll take it out for a spin and see what it can do. Right, here is my Raspberry Pi Devastator robot, just as you saw it at the end of the first video in this series. And before I get on with some Raspberry Pi coding and that type of stuff, I'm going to sort out the tracks, which as I said a second ago, are very floppy. So I need to remove some links from these tracks. So to do that, I need to remove a track. If we just look at this in close-up, as you can probably see, these are plastic sections. This is not a rubber track, these are solid tracks with, on the edges of them, there are little uh, pins, little uh, metal pins go through the tracks here. So what I need to do is to somehow remove the pins I've got a large paper clip and opened up the end, and I think that'll fit in there, but actually I suspect I won't be able to push that out. I'm going to have to use a hammer to actually push this thing out and remove the pin. So I'll get on with that. And uh, with it now tapped in there, that's the bit I can take that out, and hopefully I'll grab Mr. Pliers, I can just grab the end of that and give it a Oh, that came out very easily. And uh, yes, the track's now in two pieces. So I just need to do that again, uh, remove with this one here, remove it, put it back together, hopefully the track will be tight. And just to make it clear, be very careful to support these ends when you're, you're tapping on the top. And so I'm working here on a bit of wood, which has got a hole in it, and I placed it over that to avoid snapping the tracks. Anyway, I'll now get on with finishing this off. And uh, here we are, this is the final result. Tracks back on, much tighter, just the one link removed, but it's a, a much better result. If we compare to the, the other side, you can see that there, this is the side I haven't done yet. Look at the, the play in that, massive play in that, not very good. On this other side, much better with the, the link removed. So I was a little bit worried about going at these tracks, removing a link and sorting them out, but really a good thing to do. And now I've sorted that, I'll sort the other side, and then we'll get on with some Raspberry Pi programming. Right, here's a Devastator robot with its top taken off, pretty much in the same state internally as it was at the end of the last video. So you can see the uh, Pi Zero W linked into the motor controller, linked into the motors. We've got here the power bank that was powering the Pi, but that's currently disconnected because I've got the Pi connected to a USB adapter because it's sitting on the table, so I'll use mains power. Down here are the batteries that run the, uh, the motors. And we've also got the Pi connected to here a HDMI lead, so we can see the screen, as you'll see in a second. And it's connected through by this little lead to its single USB port of this dongle, which connects it to the Rai i8 keyboard, which runs the thing. And if you remember the way this works, if we look at the Pi's desktop, we have a piece of code which I first wrote in my Raspberry Pi Robotics number 3 video, but which I'm also using here to run the Devastator robot. I've renamed it to be Dev Robot here, just so it doesn't get confused with the previous code if you want to download it from the Explaining Computers website. Anyway, what basically this code does is to import a module called Curses to read the keyboard, it sets up some GPIO pins, and then it uses Curses keystrokes to control the GPIO pins to run the robot. So in practice at the moment to run this robot, we have to boot up the Pi, we have to open up a terminal window, and we have to execute this command here, like that. And it brings up that Curses window, and if we look back to the robot, we can control it nicely using the Rai i8. This is of course currently suspended just off the table, so that when I do that, it doesn't run off out of control. So that's how it basically currently works. We've also set up here the Q key so we can actually come out of the code. So if I go back to the uh, desktop, I press Q, we'll come out of that, and there we are, that works. And now, of course, we'd have to shut down the Pi 
properly. So at the moment, this is not an ideal way to run a robot. We have to boot up, run some code, then disconnect things from the robot, use it, and then shut down. That isn't a good thing to do. So what we want to do is to have the code for running the robot boot up when the Pi boots, and have an option to close the thing down using the keyboard. So to start with the second of those things, let's look over to the code over here. This new version of this code is very slightly different to the previous version. I've not just changed the name, I've added two things in. The first thing I've added in is up here. After I've imported the libraries for Curses and GPIO, I've also imported the ability to control operating system commands. As you can see, import OS. And as my comment there suggests, the reason for that is so we can go down here and where we're looking for different keystrokes, I've added in these two lines. And it says if car equals ordinary S, that's a capital S, then it's going to execute operating system sudo shutdown now. There's all sorts of parameters you can give the shutdown command. You can shut down straight away. You can shut down a week on Tuesday if the sun is shining, all that kind of stuff. I thought we'd just shut down straight away. So basically, if we press the capital S on the keyboard, it'll shut the Pi down in a controlled fashion. I've gone for the capital S because it means you've got to press shift first. You won't press that, hopefully, by accident. So that will take care of shutting the Pi down when we finish using the robot. Next thing we need to do is to have the ability to run the robot code on boot. And there's all sorts of ways we can do that. And here I want to do it in a situation where I want to boot into the Raspbian desktop and then run a terminal window with the code. You might in some circumstances just want to boot to a command line, but here I want Raspbian running because later in this project I'll need it to do things with the camera. So here what I'm going to do is a two-stage process. First of all, I'm going to write a bash script. So I'll go to file and a new file. Bring that up there, and we'll keep this nice and neat on screen, just in case you're watching our television or something, you can see all of that. So as it's going to be a bash script, we'll start it off in the usual way, because we have to, and it's going to be in a bin and a bash like that. And then we've got a command in here, which is basically going to execute the command to run the robot code. I haven't had that in the buffer, I think. Yes, there it is, look. What it is basically going to do is execute Python and then execute the dev robot pi command. But here I've added in the full paths for both of them because when the pi is booting, it won't have changed about that directory. So it's best to have everything there to make sure it's going to work. We now need to save that. So I'm going to do file and uh, save as. That's the best way to save things, as, as you know. I'm going to save it in Python code. It isn't Python code, but it's to do with that stuff. So we'll put it in there and we'll call it boot up um, s. H, which seems to be a good thing to call it, and save. There we are. And if we go back over here, I never trust things, let's have a look. Uh, there it is, look, boot up sh is there. We now need to make that executable, so we'll do the good old uh, ch mod plus x, and it's called boot um, up sh, and that should work like that. And if that has worked, we can test it out and go boot up and uh, sh. H, and if we run that, that seems to work. And just to test it out, I won't give you a shot, but if I do, as you can hear, I can run the Pi's motor. So press Q, it'll come out of that code. So we've got a bash script that'll do what we want. So what we now need to do is to add that to the Pi's auto start file. So I'm going to go back and we can close that down. I don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore either, probably. Let's keep things tidy. And we're going to open and we're going to go into config. And we're going to go into there, into LX session and LXDE Pi. And if we look for all files and you'll see auto starts is there and we will open that up. And again, I'll just neaten it off on the screen, just like that to keep myself happy. And here we'll add a command on the end, which will run our bash script. Now you might be thinking, why don't we put our command directly in here? I wanted to have a bash script first because I wanted to have the ability to add things to that bash script over time. I don't want to be adding lots of stuff to the auto start file. So the command we need is to run LX terminal and then to execute our bash script. So I'll put that in. And what this is doing, as you can see, is to run LX terminal. It's telling it to run the following command in a terminal. And then it's actually, and again, we've got the full path to our uh, script, home, pi, python code, and then boot up sh. So all I've got to do now is to save this file and save, and things should all be set up. So all we need to do now is to test things out, isn't it? It's very, very exciting. So what we'll do is we'll go to uh, shutdown, and we will do a reboot. 
So uh, here we are again booting up. We'll uh, fast forward in time a little bit. And uh, here we are arriving in Raspbian. And yes, it's run up the terminal. It looks like everything is running OK. That's all come up very well indeed. So if I go back to the robot with the keyboard. Yes, it's working. It's working. That is marvellous. And in theory, I can even shut the thing down if I use Shift and uh, S, Shift and S on there. And uh, yes, the Raspberry Pi is now shutting itself down. Well, here I am back again to look at a few more practicalities with the robot. I'm going to look at power and I'm going to get rid of the uh, power bank we used previously to power the Pi. So we don't need that in there. And I'm actually not going to fit a LiPo pack, as I said at the start of the video. I'm going to continue to use this 6AA battery pack, which actually comes with the robot when you get it from DF Robot. And uh, the reason for that is that if I put a, put a LiPo battery in, I'm still going to have to remove it from the robot to actually charge it up. Probably not safe to charge a LiPo battery in situ. It would be rather dangerous to catch fire. Well, they occasionally catch fire anyway. So I'm going to be using 9 i rechargeables rather than the the uh, single-use batteries here. So I'm going to get six of these. These are 2,400 milliamp hour um, 9 mi rechargeables currently charging up. And this pack's going to end up sitting in the back of the robot. There won't be this HDMI cable there. It'll fit somewhere in here. And it'll be removable because there is a nicer connector on there to do that with. So I can take it out the back nice and easily. And to hold it in place, I'm going to use some Velcro strips, which are around here somewhere. There they are. These came with the robot kit, so I'll put those in here. I'll be able to uh, Velcro that pack in the back of here nice and easy. I think I'll also probably extend the wires on this connector just to make it easier to uh, have that in place. Now, if you're wondering how I'm going to power the Pi, the way I'm going to power the Pi is that on the board here, which controls the motors, the L298N, on here there is a 5 volt enable. And this allows this board, regardless of its voltage inputs, anywhere up to 12 volts, to output 5 volts, which we can use to run the Pi. And just to check that out, if I come in with some multimeter test probes, hold those on there, we can see it's outputting just over 5 volts. And if we run the motors, we can see a very slight variance as the motors run as they draw power as well, but I think that will be fine. So what I'll do is to connect this pin on the L298N to pin 4 on the Pi, which is 5 volts, and that'll allow the Pi to be powered, and that's how I'm going to be powering things using this battery pack. Now, that does raise other issues, because if we're going to use the L298N to power the Pi, at the moment we have a switch down here on the top of the robot which turns it on and off. And we only turn it on when the Pi is booted, because when the Pi is booting up, its GPIO pins can be in a random state, so the motors can run before we've actually had the code running. Everything's nice and clean, then we can turn the motors on. So what I'm going to do is to put in this, which is a switch, and this switch will be mounted also on the top of the robot, so we can first of all boot up the, uh, the Pi by turning the power on, and then when the Pi is actually booted properly, we can then turn on that switch, which is a double pole switch, to allow the power to get through to the motors. And you can see that if you look at the wiring diagram here, where that switch is going to go. Now, the other thing I thought might be nice is to know when the Pi has actually got some power, because of course this will be running without a monitor. So what I'm going to do is to use these, which are some LEDs and some nice little bezels and some current limiting resistors there, and I'll connect those in so that one of them is connected directly to pin 1 on the Pi, which is just 3.3 volts, which means that when the thing is, has power connected, you'll see that command, you'll see there's power in the system. But I'm going to connect the other LED via its current limiting resistor to pin 29, which is a GPIO pin. And I've altered our code to deal with that. And if we have a look at the code, you can see we're importing the module time. We're then setting GPIO pin 29 to be an output. And then before we run all the code that reads the keyboard, does all that stuff for the robot, we're going to just flash the LED by turning the GPIO pin on and off a few times, a little for loop there, just so we can know the Pi has booted up. So that's what's going to be happening. You can see on the final wiring diagram how everything's going to be in place. I will now get on with sorting all this out. And here we are. Everything is now all wired up. The extra GPIO connections are made onto the Pi. The uh, batteries are in the back on this uh, Velcro mount, which allows me to take them out and put them back again. The motors are wired in via this switch, and the LEDs are fitted on the front. They had to go on looking a bit like eyes, didn't they? And the wiring is not uh, incredibly neat, but there's got to be enough play in the wiring to allow me to put the top back on. 
And so that's what I'll do now. And I just put the top back on the machine a little bit carefully, get it in here like this, fit in something like that. And there's uh, six screws to go in. And we will, of course, fit them with Mr. Screwdriver. And uh, there we are, the top's now back on. The robot is complete. But in fact, I think I'll put it back on top of its piece of uh, Tupperware, just because I'm going to test it out. I don't want to drive it accidentally off the counter. Now, this in theory is now an entirely, I'll push that back in there. This is an entirely independent machine. We should be able to turn the thing on by pressing the button here to turn on the power to the Pi via the motor controller, on like that. And as you can see, the, the light has gone on down the front, down there. And if you remember, what should now happen is that the other light here should also come on uh, in a few minutes or under a minute when the Pi is fully booted up. It should flash and then go solid. So we'll wait a second for that. We'll speed forward in time. And there we are. The light is now uh, flashing, which means we can turn on the motors. Uh, the Pi should be running its code now. And we can take this uh, controller, turn the controller on. It's always a good idea, isn't it? And in theory, we can now use this to control the, uh, the motors. Yes, our, our robot is now live. So we could take this outside, for example, drive it around. And then when we're finished, all we've got to do is press Shift and S, which will uh, shut down the Pi, if you remember. And then one of those lights should then go off. Oh, the suspense is, there we are, the suspense is killing us, suspense has killed us, it's gone off. And there we are, we can now flick off the motors and flick off the Pi. So I've taken you there very quickly for the full process of boot up, operation and shut down. But I now think it's high time to take this outside and give it a proper test. So, I've now brought the robot outside to test it on some rougher terrain. Let's see how it works. Yes, it seems capable of dealing with uh, concrete. Let's uh, still got to learn how to drive this properly. Let's go take it forwards. And as you can see, it's driving around the uh, washing line here. And can it do stones? Let's try it on uh, something rougher. Ooh, not bad. Not bad at all. The robot is uh, tougher than we might imagine. And it's a nice, bright, uh, super bright LEDs. You actually come through very well, even in daylight, don't they, on the front, those lovely green eyes. Let's give it a spin round. Uh, can it get off the stones there? It can. And uh, I think that's a successful test. Our Pi-based Devastator robot, oh dear, going a bit out of control there, has certainly proved its worth. It's uh, clearly going to work very well indeed. I don't know about you, but I always think computing gets slightly more exciting, slightly more interesting when it migrates from the screen to controlling a physical device like a robot, when your code in the computer land actually does something in the physical world. And that's why I've enjoyed putting this video together and working more on the Devastator robot. And I look forward to working on it more in the future, in particular adding a camera. But now that's it for this time. If you enjoyed the video, please press the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.